You ready? Ready. I'm not quite sure actually what day it is of the hunt. They all seem to be blending in together. We've been working the same program now for the whole time we've been here basically is hike up the mountain and glass this big valley but with three main drainages coming into it and try to locate the moose and then make a plan. I located the moose that we've been after for the last two days and he's moved way up high further away from us. So the spot he's in right now is really tough but we're starting to run out of time so we have to figure out how to try to stalk him as quietly as possible. We got to be on our A game now. That extra five percent of diligence is definitely what we have to have to do with this moose. Can't see any better here than where we were sitting, that's for sure. You, you get into this stuff and there's just, you couldn't shoot 50 yards. If they're up in this stuff like that bull this morning, you just can't get at them. We're starting to try to find other options. Tried to move over to another ridge and hope it was open so we could look down the valley, but it's not. Hate to say it, I think we gotta go back to where we were. That ridge that we've been sitting on is definitely our, our best option as far as seeing anything, but we're not seeing anything new. We know that there's two big bulls. If this one is any indication of how much they're moving, he's probably here too, we're just not seeing him. To walk away from that bull or either one of those bulls is really tough to do. It's kind of been the same program for these moose. You know, five o'clock, start to do a few calls, and around six o'clock, they start, start to really move. After not being able to see this bull for eight hours today, you know, he just bedded down, and he just stood up, and you know, right away, with probably within minutes, they were able to pick him up. He's a long ways away, and it's tough. We've had a lot of opportunity for this bull. Now he's kind of making his way back down into the valley that I think that he feels that he owns it. So we're gonna go back to camp and come back here tomorrow morning and see if we can't locate him, and hopefully he's in a spot that we can stalk him. Because today he certainly wasn't. He was just unstalkable. This may be our last shot at it, because I'm sure that he's had his fill with us. Once the fog lifted, it didn't take us very long to pick him up. He moved way from the side of that mountain yesterday evening, and he just slowly, over the evening and night, he slowly made his way almost right back to the meadow that we watched him and the other big bull fight. So he's walked up toward the meadow and then he's bedded down in the old burn. I believe that he's just gonna spend the day there and probably not get up again until, you know, five, six tonight. We're gonna come down off the hill and we're gonna try to get within 300 yards of that burn. Hopefully, you know, he comes out and he continues to walk this way. The only thing that, that he could do is turn around and go back up the drainage and we wouldn't see him through the burn. We have to do everything right. He's on high alert and he has been all over the last two days so we cannot afford to literally break a branch. This is this is gonna be a difficult stock. He just walked into the burn and laid down. We didn't see him lay down but like it's a patch, right? Yeah. Like he's got to be in there somewhere. Right. So it didn't come up. No. So we think we got a plan. <laughs> Make the first call at about five o'clock, and then just only so that it gets his interest. 
not trying to call him in because he, he, he won't come in. Yeah. But he's always moved toward the call when it's far away. Yeah. We've known where he is for the last four or five days, but we just couldn't get within range yesterday. But he was at about 700 yards away from us, and uh, that's that's a risky shot, so I didn't take it. You know, I kind of wish that I would have had the opportunity, a better opportunity to harvest this animal, but He's uh, walking I haven't said that. Greg gets in there and gets it done. I'm, I'll be so happy and so proud. Today it could be different. I mean, the, weather is, the weather's good. We've got the... The wind isn't uh, whipping around like it was yesterday. It was not in our favor. And that's what cost us. The moose caught wind and he moved off immediately. So he's wise to us. I mean, the game now is you gotta be really stealthy. I mean, you gotta move slowly and get into position and hopefully uh, he'll make a move. Guys, that has been without a doubt the toughest moose hunt that I've ever been on. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. We could hear my dad cheering from the side of the hill over there right now. It's been a fantastic hunt as far as being able to pattern one animal for five days. I really wanted my dad to take him, but it just wasn't necessarily going to happen. So let's go take a look at him because I'm pretty sure that my dad's going to try to make his way here. I just wish it could have been him right here, right now. There he is. Oh my. High five, buddy. No what an awesome shot. No, no high fives. You just no. get a hug. Oh. Good shot. That was friggin' awesome. That was that all worked, eh? See, we didn't know what was what was really going on. When he started moving, he came out of the timber, the, the fire patch there, eh? Yeah. And he started moving across this way in front of me on a, on on an angle, slowly, like very slowly. And then he stopped right in the middle of this uh, brushy area and he just stood there for 15 or 20 minutes. It was a classic situation where we could see the hunter, we could see the animal, and we were in a position to overlook it all. And it was, it was totally, totally amazing. The biggest fear for me was that he just keeps continuing on into this brush line. And once he got, once he was into that, we would never see him. Congratulations. Congratulations is right. Awesome. I said that, uh, that this has been the hardest moose hunt that I think I've ever been on as far as, sure, there's moose hunts where you actually don't see any moose, but I mean, as far as trying to figure out what this moose was doing and, and having opportunities and then either not taking them or, you know, and then yesterday he did not come out of that timber anywhere we could stalk him at all. So it's been, it's been a roller coaster ride of, of emotions up and down and trying to figure them out. And well, you did it, son. You did it. That's awesome. We did it. That is awesome. We did it. We did it. So I think if you tried to describe this hunt to your buddies back home that hunt, how would you describe it? They wouldn't believe me. Number one, they would not believe me. We worked hard for it. Every day we push and push. You know, they, they'd never get the, the true feeling of what we went through until you actually get out here and experience it and, and see these places. And to try to explain it is almost impossible, but that's what makes it so rewarding. For sure.